Antonio starts right now. Investigators are working to figure out what exactly led to a body being found near the Bear County Courthouse. What we know so far, Jonathan Cotto joining us live with the latest details. And LULAC distributes half a million dollars in financial help to families affected by the deadly Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. We hear from the families of the victims who say they are grateful. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 78 now. Will we see rain and when? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is August 21st. Happy Sunday morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. So what did you do yesterday? I've been staying low. Uh, dog Scooby. Stay, I've been staying low. low. My, <laughs> my dog Scooby had surgery, so he can't. He, he's in the cone of shame. He's, the cone he's doing, of shame. He's doing fine. He just had a little leg surgery. But okay. I've, I've been hanging out with him on the couch. A lot of Netflix Good. and chill with Scooby. And uh, staying away from the heat. Staying out of the heat. And Sarah, I was watching those teaser clouds. Really nothing came out of it yesterday. No, and you know, we do have a few light rain showers out there early this morning. Now the heavier rain is actually off to the uh, east right now, just south of I-10, right between Moulton and Schulenburg and north of Hallettsville. That's one of those tropical bands there of showers. But around San Antonio, I mean, really just a few light streamer showers across uh, the northwestern section of Bear County. Uh, coming up, we'll take a closer deep dive into which areas are actually seeing some rain. But the big story today is not the rain. Overall rain chances are a measly 20%. The big story today is how humid it's going to be all day long. We're going to be dealing with high humidity that 95 in the afternoon will feel more like 100. Now, wimpy rain chances today, 20%, but we do have better rain chances in the week ahead. I'll give you those details as well in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning. Police found a body right outside the Bear County Courthouse parking garage. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from downtown. Now, Jonathan, do police have any idea what happened? Good morning, Sarah. Actually, they don't, and this is all currently under investigation. Information is very limited, but we do know that body was found exactly right here at this parking garage next to the Bear County Courthouse. Let's take a look at some of the video that shows the scene earlier this morning. We know San Antonio police responded shortly before, just minutes before 2 o'clock this morning, to the corner of East Nueva and South Florida. It's just before 2 o'clock this morning. This is right outside the Bear County Courthouse, again, a parking garage. They tell us they found a man dead on the sidewalk with several lacerations to his head. Now, coming back out live again, information is very limited, but we do know San Antonio police are uh, in interviewing and questioning several people who came across the body, trying to learn and piece together exactly how that body got there and, and what happened to him. Again, this is a man who is believed to be or have been to believe to in his early 20s. This is all under investigation. Max and Sarah reporting live. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, a drive-by shooting on the east side injures a woman in a San Antonio police looking for the person who pulled the trigger. This happened on Austin Street near Highway 281 near downtown. Police say the woman was in the a front yard when bullets began to fly. She was hit in the leg and taken to the hospital. Officers say her injury is non-life-threatening. So far, police don't have any information on the suspect or suspects, but say a pickup truck was involved. Top stories this morning, a Bear County Sheriff's Office corporal facing charges of criminal mischief and has been served termination picture papers. So take a look. This is 41 year old Adelina Agosto. Now, BCSO officials say she allegedly showed up drunk to a person's home, then caused damage when they did not answer. Agosto has served with BCSO for 17 years. Officials say she was served termination papers after her arrest. She is currently on unpaid administrative leave. Well, it's been almost three months since 21 students and teachers were shot and killed at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. On top of the physical and emotional toll, families of the victims, along with the survivors, they've also had to deal with the financial toll. So stepping in to our immediate help for those families is LULAC. Families tell Lead Waldman every bit counts. My son Noah Orona was in room 112 at Robb Elementary where he suffered a gunshot wound to the back. 
and uh, survived. Uh, he spent a little bit over a week at Methodist Children's Hospital in San Antonio. He's doing okay. That's how Oscar Arona describes his son Noah, a survivor of the Robb Elementary School shooting nearly three months later. About a two inch wide hole in his back and then the exit wound was about an eight inch slither on his upper shoulder that pretty much left the, I call it a canal of destruction. While he spent a week in the hospital, his path to recovery is much longer. We have 48 uh, occupational therapy sessions between now and December and 46 physical therapy sessions between now and December. It's just as much a toll financially as it is physically. My wife and I both work. And uh, one of the things that we've encountered is a lot of the assistance is income based, so we don't qualify. Today, LULAC, the oldest and largest Latino civil rights organization, helped with that burden. They put together the Pray for Texas national campaign. It ended up raising nearly half a million dollars to be distributed to families affected by the tragedy. It's something Jackie Casares' father is grateful for. Of course, we need to go back to work, and, and I've tried. You know, it, it just, you know, with this tragedy, it, it's different, you know, from losing a child or a person to a sickness, you know, versus how they were taken. It's that much harder. Aside from the monetary help, LULAC also offered support for raising the age to purchase an assault style rifle from 18 to 21. Casares vows he and other families won't stop fighting until that happens. That's all the damage it did to my little girl. And it's important, you know, each your own doesn't need that weapon. Senator Roland Gutierrez was with LULAC today. He says he'll fight with families to raise the age to 21 to buy assault style rifles. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. We do want to remind you that there is currently $16 million in donations being handled by the National Compassion Fund. That money will be distributed to those impacted by the tragedy in November. For our previous reporting on the Uvalde Together, we rise fund, head to ksat.com. Well, the updated San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology is one of the latest additions to Port San Antonio. So on top of space exploration, augmented reality, and of course, the Tesla coils, the museum is working to inspire the next generation. That's why joining us in today's leading essay segment is Jim Pershbach, president and CEO of Port San Antonio. Good morning, Mr. Pershbach. Thank you for making time for us. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Good morning to y'all. Good morning. So, Jim, what does the new look SAM set mean for the port and what does it mean for local students? It, for the port and for students, it really means the same thing. It's a chance to get hands on with the technology and the techniques that are being developed here in San Antonio. See everything from robotic space exploration to cybersecurity to aircraft. And if the kids get interested in it, well, we've got programs that can help connect up with educational opportunities, employment opportunities, and entrepreneurship opportunities. The arena up and running. I know the Smashing Pumpkins opened up. I wasn't there because it was sold out, <laughs> but I heard it was a successful concert. So how has attendance been so far? And is it going according to plan? Oh, attendance has been fantastic. And what's been wonderful is we see some folks coming down here who normally wouldn't come to a big technology campus like this which we think is opening a lot of eyes two ways. One, it's showing people what goes on in San Antonio. And two, it's providing a great opportunity for the folks on this campus to meet other people from around the community. Oh, Jim, taking a step back, looking big picture, we've seen the port grow and bring in so many companies over the just the last five years. What is this latest addition? What does it mean for the future of San Antonio jobs and the future of you know, jobs and education for the Alamo City? Well, what we're really excited about, we've got a tremendous number of great people here in San Antonio. And being able to match them up with educational and work opportunities, we think is what's gonna keep driving this. When we talk to companies about coming to this campus, they don't talk about real estate, they don't talk about buildings. They talk about where is our talent coming from. And it's wonderful to be able to say it's coming right from the neighborhoods here in San Antonio. Is there anything exciting on the horizon? Well, there's an awful lot. As you know, we're about to launch a couple of great big buildings, uh, aircraft terminal for electric aircraft. And we think we've got a few surprises we'll be announcing in the next couple of weeks. Nothing you want to say here? <laughs> oh, we... I'd love to say it now, but I'd be scooping myself. Okay. I learned something from journalists. Okay. That's fair. So recently in the stories on KSAT.com, DeLorean released uh, some of their new prototypes. Very exciting stuff. Again, for anyone who hasn't seen it, KSAT.com. So, Jim, what has DeLorean meant to Port San Antonio? And is that kind of a sign for more and more companies to come on down? 
I think what you're going to see is a lot more companies like DeLorean combining headquarters operations, engineering operations, and really being at the cutting edge of technology. Those new cars that they were showing off at the Pebble Beach show yesterday, I mean, they're absolutely beautiful. And they're right showing the best of what we can do here in San Antonio. All right, Jim Pershbach, President and CEO of Port San Antonio, thank you so much for joining us this morning. For our viewers to watch this full conversation, you can head to ksat.com later this morning. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Y'all take care. You too. Time now, 810, 78 degrees out. All right, we are celebrating all seniors today thanks to a special proclamation by a late president. That story is still to come. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Only 78 now. What is the rest of the day? What about the next work week? Will we see rain? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes. Good morning. Welcome back. And hey, Happy Sunday. Happy, Happy Sunday. Sunday. Uh, is, is it one of those days, Sarah, where we can kind of just like lay on the couch? Will it be, I know you're like, it's really not a rainy day. No, it's going to be later a humid in the, Later day. in the week is a good couch stay inside. Tuesday, day. Wednesday. Okay. But a lot of us have to work on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I do want to start with the radar because we do have a few showers out there early this morning. Now around San Antonio, they're very light, but you can see off to the east, you can see that there are some heavier rain showers right north of uh, Flatonia at the moment across I-10. These are tropical in nature, big fat raindrops, but those are pushing off to the north. Meanwhile, around San Antonio, it's very, very light. Honestly, sprinkles in some areas. Northwest San Antonio, uh, near Leon Springs, Scenic Oaks, and then up near Silver Hills and Bergheim, right on that Comal and, uh, pardon me, Kendall and Comal County line, right near Bergheim. And then we've got another light rain shower that's just now developing north of Hondo and Medina County and to the west of Holotus. These are measly. They are not amounting to anything at all around San Antonio. Our rain chance is only 20% for the day. It is just mainly going to be a very humid day. It's 78 degrees outside right now, and dew points are in the mid 70s. That's about as high as a dew point can go around San Antonio in the summertime. So it already feels like 81. You'll walk outside. If you don't see a sprinkle, you immediately feel how humid it is outside. 79 in Pleasanton. Good morning in Hondo. It's 77 degrees. 81 in Catula. 78 in Del Rio. 78 in Gonzales and 78 in Pleasanton. Here's a look at the future cast. Much of the rain today is going to be across our eastern coastal communities and again only isolated around San Antonio chances 20%. The big story today is how humid and warm it's going to be. High temperature should be near 95 around San Antonio. It'll be 92 in Bolverde, 92 in Bernie, 95 in Seguin, 96 in New Braunfels, 94 in Canyon Lake, 95 in Bandera, 95 in Hondo, 96 in Uvalde, and 95 in Floresville. And again, that humidity will be sticking with us all day long. Dew points will stay in the 70s. That is at the absolute top of the scale. So even if the thermometer doesn't reach 100 degrees, it's going to feel like it outside. Here's a look at the heat index for this afternoon, feeling closer to 100 in many neighborhoods out there than the mid 90s because of that humidity. So taking you through our KSAT 12 hour forecast, we are going to carry a 20% isolated shower chance throughout the day, but it's mainly going to be a dry one. Temperatures in the afternoon will be in the 90s and we're going to top off right at 95 degrees. Winds today will be from the southeast at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20 occasionally, so a bit of a breeze out there. Now, much better rain chances in the week ahead for us because of a couple of factors. First of all, we've got some monsoonal and some tropical moisture working in from the Gulf of Mexico itself, so high moisture content in the atmosphere. At the same time, this trough of low pressure is going to be moving across Texas. You can already see that there's some heavier rain across North Texas, and it's those areas in North Texas that have a risk for flash flooding today. Numerous flash floods are expected from Sherman Denison down to Dallas Fort Worth out to Shreveport, Louisiana. We, however, will see our best rain chances in San Antonio on Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. 
Now, I have to mention, rain will be scattered in nature, streaky in nature. So there will be those that get rain, and then unfortunately there will be those that miss out. But your overall chance is about 50%, which is one of the best rain chances we've seen in a while. And with any rain that develops, it could become heavy, and the reason for that is all that tropical moisture that's out there right now. So just to summarize everything I said, only isolated rain today and tomorrow. Then by Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have scattered showers in the area, temperatures will be in the uh, upper 80s rather than in the upper 90s and our rain chances will taper off by the weekend. Max and Sarah coming up, I'm going to have a look at the future cast for what the radar could look like by Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 818, 78 degrees out. All right, coming up after the break, why today is a good day to honor the experiences and influences of our senior citizens. But first, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, one, three, nine, fireball zero. Daily four, six, eight, four, six, fireball nine. Cash five, one, four, seven, 14, 32, Texas lotto. Two, 13, 20, 33, 42, 45. Take a look at the Powerball. Five, nine, 11, 16, 66, Powerball seven, power play two. The number of monkeypox cases in the U.S. continue to rise across the country, and now New York is reporting its first child case. ABC's Christine Sloan explains. The New York State Department of Health is reporting its first case of monkeypox in a child. State data doesn't indicate the child's specific age or where that case was reported, but it wasn't in New York City. That's as the Biden administration continues an aggressive effort to stop the monkeypox outbreak by offering vaccinations at LGBTQ events across the country this weekend, among them the Pride Festival in Charlotte, North Carolina. The CDC finds 93% of cases are still among men who reported recent sexual contact with other men. Just over 14,000 Americans have been infected with monkeypox, but there are early signs that new cases are plateauing. A million vaccine doses have been delivered nationwide, and starting Monday, 1.8 million more doses will be made available, where medical professionals are trained in a new method of injection right under the top layer of skin instead of into fatty tissue, a technique that only requires fifth of the dose, increasing the supply. Jurisdictions are very enthusiastically starting this. I think it's, it's exciting from the perspective of access. Thank you. In Santa Clara County, California, health officials are already offering vaccinations using the new method. My mom passed because of COVID. Um, that makes you think that uh, you better act when these situations happen, right? And uh, uh, that's why I, I, I got it done and I'm, I'm inviting everybody to, to get it done. The vaccine manufacturer is raising concerns about this newer method of injection, citing a lack of data and saying this method could result in increased reactions. But the FDA says the reactions are, quote, manageable and both methods provide similar levels of protection. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. All right. Well, it is a special day. We know at all times we should always respect our elders. So today we can celebrate them. That's right. Today is National Senior Citizens Day. Back in 1988, President Ronald Reagan made the day official with a proclamation. Today is an opportunity to show respect for your for seniors accomplishments and influence of their lives. So let's go to the numbers. A recent census count shows there are more than 47 million seniors living in the United States. And here's the thing. That number expected to nearly double by the year 2060. So I was I was looking up what AARP considers seniors anything over 50. I just say, you know, call your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Tell them you love them. That's good. Tell them you appreciate them. Time now, 825, 78 degrees out. All right, Max, what is going on with my Cowboys? All right, how about them Cowboys? We're in the midst of the preseason, and I got to say, even though none of the starters played yesterday, no Mike Parsons, no Dak, no Zeke, no CeeDee Lamb, I'll tell you what, the Cowboys looked exciting. We're going to talk about two touchdowns and uh, what's everyone's talking about this morning. Plus, local school districts are trying to be proactive when it comes to keeping your kids safe at school. We break down how they're using software to monitor students' online activity to get in front of any potential problems.
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 21st. Thank you so much for waking up with us. So yesterday, Max, I was telling Sarah Spivey, I had a raccoon in my attic for the last couple of days. <laughs> I had critter control come out. Oh, they did come out. They came out. Okay. But the, the critter was still in there um, on Friday night. So did Friday they night. do their job? Well, they were waiting for it to come out because okay. it has to come out for water eventually. Because Do it gets you have hot. a raccoon in your roof right now? I don't think so, Sarah. Okay. I think yesterday, <laughs> because it was hot, it was so hot yesterday, the raccoon finally had to leave to go get some water. Gotcha. So okay. Okay. It's good for something. Right. Well, yeah. Hey, Sarah, though, um, there are better rain chances in the coming days, so... You may want to call critter control again. OK, so right now outside we've got variable clouds at, at the airport. It's cloudy and 78 degrees, but over at Stinson on the south side, it's partly cloudy uh, near 80. Kelly uh, and Converse right near 80 as well. A few more clouds out there and we've even got some light rains and sprinkles today. But here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Now today, mainly just hot and humid. It'll feel like 100 degrees. The humidity is the big story, but there is the potential for an isolated shower today. Better rain chances, especially Tuesday and Wednesday with scattered downpours in the in the future for us. So we'll be looking at all of this and more and I'll take an in-depth look at the radar right now where those sprinkles are in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man was found dead near the bear, 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 excuse me, near the Bear County Courthouse. San Antonio police immediately began investigating. So Jonathan Cotto has been covering the story since early this morning. It seems that there's been a break in the case. Jonathan, what can you tell us? That's right, Max. We're actually just learning that police have located a suspect. They located that suspect earlier this morning after setting up a quadrant and also deploying their Eagle helicopter into the sky. The 28 year old suspect was found inside of the parking garage with a firearm. Now, let's take a look at what the scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio police responded to the corner of East Nueva and South Flores. This parking garage right outside of the Bear County courthouse, they say the victim, the murder victim, him here in this case was found with a heavy and severe trauma to the back of his head. They describe it as lacerations. The good news here this morning coming back out live is that police again have located that suspect and that suspect has been taken into custody. But again, this case remains under investigation. Max and Sarah reporting live from downtown. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. That suspect found at 155 this morning. Also new this morning, the Kerr County Sheriff's Office, along with Kerrville Police Department, arrested a suspect wanted in Wisconsin for murder. Deputies say the arrest happened yesterday during a traffic stop in Ingram, about six miles west of Kerrville. 39-year-old Gustavo Cantu was taken into custody, along with 33-year-old Naomi Rose Cadote who they say may be an accomplice. Authorities were on the lookout after being notified six days ago that Gustavo and his 31-year-old brother Alejandro Cantu may have been hiding in Ingram. Both men are wanted in Green Bay, Wisconsin for an alleged drug-related murder that happened back in April. So take a look at your screen. Kerr County Sheriff officials say Alejandro Cantu, the brother, still has not been found. So if you see this man that's on your screen right now and know where he is, you were urged to call the Kerr County Crime Stoppers line. That number also on your screen, 830-896-TIPS. Well, we have a follow-up on proposed changes for the Amazon Apache Court. So just yesterday, community members, they were given the opportunity to give feedback on a recent survey. The purpose of the survey is to allow people to give their opinions on the reimagined Amazon Courts and the master plan initiated by Opportunity Home San Antonio, formerly known as Saha, or the San Antonio Housing Authority. Those in attendance shared their concerns about losing a part of their history with this possible reimagining. We were all concerned about um, the environment, so if you destroy the buildings, um, you know, you're just uh, adding to the problems that we have with climate change. Opportunity Home San Antonio has contracted Able City to handle the redevelopment process. And after going through the feedback, agency officials will share the design concept to the public. Well, intervening before it's too late, that's the goal of school districts now. They're turning to software to monitor students' online activity. District officials hope by evaluating digital footprints, they can spot warning signs in time. But as Camelia Wattis explains, the software has limitations. It doesn't take long. Let's say a student gets on their school email and then types a message wherein they reveal 
they want to commit suicide. Within minutes, a software called Social Sentinel notifies a school official, like Northeast ISD Police Chief Wally McCampbell. After the chief reviews the email, the student's parents get a notice, and the student is directed to mental health resources. Crisis avoided. And when confronted, the students say, yeah, I was, I was really considering it, which surprised the parents. I had no idea. So they were really appreciative that we were monitoring it and, and saw it and we were notified so we could go out and, and prevent a tragedy. In Northeast ISD, the program only reviews public posts created within the district's boundaries on or off school property. It also reviews messages or images in students' emails. It filters down to some type of threat or harm to something or somebody. Northeast ISD isn't unique. School districts throughout Texas are using software similar to Social Sentinel. In fact, Seguin ISD uses a software called Gaggle. That one only tracks students' activity through email or their Google Drive. Is a huge bank of language that it uses to really make that threat assessment and, and make a determination that this is something that the campus needs to be aware of. Both the Seguin and Northeast school districts began using the technology within the last few years, and it's helped. It allows schools to be very timely in, in their response and, and possibly save lives and, and prevent something tragic from happening. One life saved is, is worth a district or somebody partnering with, if not Social Central, another type of company that does the same thing, um, because we're all here to do the same thing, and that's save lives. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. I'm Lewis Bolden. School safety, a topic at the forefront of every parent's mind. To date, there have been 102 incidents of gunfire on school grounds, resulting in 41 deaths. That's in 2022 alone. What solutions exist? You need to learn signs and symptoms of pre-attack behavior. Can anybody tell me what bullying is? Meet the people working to make schools safer. See the inventions making buildings more secure. It slides in like that. Solutions to keep your children out of harm's way. August 24th at 8 p.m. If you're looking for a job, listen up. HEB is hosting a hiring event happening at all of its Texas stores. The one day hiring event is happening this week on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Representatives will be conducting on site interviews at every HEB Central Market and Mitienda location. According to HEB, there are more than 250 positions to apply for just here in the San Antonio area. For more information on this story, just head to our website, ksat.com. Now, while there are a lot of people trying to land a job, some workers are engaging in a new trend known as quiet quitting. So and it's an unexpected spin on what some people would call work-life balance. Now, we first saw this in the Wall Street Journal. It was a great article about it. So ABC's Rebecca Jarvis explains. Today, I want to talk about a trend that I've been seeing all over the internet, as well as heard from a few of my friends, which is quiet quitting. Quiet quitting. The new trend redefining work life balance for young professionals everywhere. Quiet quitting is just kind of, it's about quitting the hustle culture that goes along with work in our society. I can still be a very productive, active worker and not have to focus on work 24 hours a day. The hashtag quiet quitting seen over three and a half million times on TikTok alone. I just heard about this term called quiet quitting, and I realized that is what I've been doing against my will. This new form of quitting happens when workers mentally step back from the burdens of work, working the bare minimum number of hours and not making their jobs an important center of their lives. When I was quiet quitting, I didn't want to constantly feel that stress of working that job and feeling like I needed to put my 1000% in. So I decided to scale that back and really just do the work that was required of me. And with COVID-19 blurring the lines between home and work, many now using quiet quitting as a way to set more boundaries between their professional and personal lives. I was really struggling with the idea of just a nine to five, especially when COVID hit and we were all working from home and I was just 
stuck at my desk all day from nine to five at a minimum, working on my computer, staring at a screen. For me, that just wasn't the ideal situation. The trend of putting limits on the job popular among those in their early 20s. Being connected to a mission or purpose is a high priority for the younger generation. That's something they want, but they're, they're not experiencing it in their current workplaces. That was Rebecca Jarvis reporting. I, I uh, think it needs to hold on. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think Sarah Spivey made a great point mm -hmm. earlier. It needs to be renamed, not quite quitting, because it makes it sound like you're quitting your job, but work boundaries. I think that was a great point, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> Time now, 840, 78 degrees out. All right, the countdown is on for the official kickoff of the KSAC Pigskin Classic. Coming up, in addition to Las Palapas, find out where else you can buy your tickets. But first, when we talk about the Cowboys, we're in the midst of the preseason. They looked good yesterday. We know no starters played, but a big win. And what comes next? A couple exciting plays that we're going to show you. Not this one. This one doesn't count. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go Cowboys. All right, 78 degrees at 840. There's those teaser clouds Sarah Spivey's been talking about. When will we see rain? Are the rain chances greater later in the week? Sarah Spivey will explain when we come back. Good morning. Coming up on this week, my exclusive interview with Liz Cheney. We talk about her political future, her vow to keep Donald Trump from returning to power, and the next steps for the January 6th committee. Plus, we visit the southern border as migrant crossings reach a record high, and Texas Governor Abbott buses thousands to New York. And as the war in Ukraine reaches the six-month mark, we're live in the war zone. That's all coming up on this week. Well, a day of fun served as a day of honor for a group of people participating in the D-Day kickball tournament. The event honored the life of DeMonte Elam, a UTSA student who died in a car crash. His friends wanted to find their own unique way to celebrate his life, so dozens of people showed up to play kickball, one of his favorite sports. One of the organizers, who was also his best friend, says he would have loved the tournament. He was live for the party, made everybody want to be there at the party. If something was dead, he'd be one picking everything up and showing out and having everybody be the person they want to be. So he was, he was actually like a go-getter. I loved it. So people who joined the tournament wore jerseys with the many different nicknames, loved ones that they had for him throughout his life. All right. Sarah Spivey, how's it going? Hey guys, it's going <laughs> good. You know, we do have some very light rain out there. Um, honestly, sprinkles around San Antonio at the moment. It's mainly just very humid. Take a look at the radar right now. You can see that the heavier rain is east uh, toward the Houston metro area, but we do have some light rain showers in uh, Carnes County right now, right near Carnes City, pushing up there toward Falls City and closer to Poth in, in Wilson County. Now again, these are very light rain showers, not amounting to much. They're streamer showers, so they're quickly moving to the north and around the metro area, you can see it's fairly dry. We do have one shower out near Bernie right now. You can see it right along I-10 there, to, uh, just to the north of Fair Oaks Ranch. Now, this is the kind of rain that we could see today. Very isolated, not amounting to much, and most of it to the east of 281. Here's a look at the, uh, the forecast for the day today. 20% chance throughout the day, so don't bank on the rain. Bank on the humidity and bank on the heat. So it's going to be very humid outside all day today. We'll be at 83 by 10, 88 by noon, 95 for the high temperature. Southeast winds gusting up to about 20 miles per hour every now and then. Here's a look at that future cast. Again, you can see isolated rain and mostly east of uh, 281 and I-10. Chance for rain is only 20 percent. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds throughout the day today. If you get some rain, you'll be lucky uh, this afternoon. And right now you can see the mix of sun and clouds outside around San Antonio. It's 80 degrees, but it already feels like 84. Dew points are in the low to mid 70s. Very humid outside. Good morning in Yavaldi at 77 degrees, 77 in Kerrville, 79 in New Braunfels, 70 77 in Gonzales and 80 in Pleasanton. Here's your neighborhood high temperatures 97 in Del Rio. It'll be 95 in Hondo, 96 in Pleasanton, 95 in Gonzales. Up in the hill country, low 90s are a safe bet and even closer towards San Antonio, Rio Medina, 94, 95 in Seguin, 96 in New Braunfels, 95 at the Stinson area, 92 in Bernie and Bulverde. Now, again, the biggest thing you'll notice today, other than perhaps a passing downpour, is that it's going to be very humid. Dew points will be substantial enough to make it feel like it's 100 degrees outside, even if the thermometer 
barely gets out of the low 90s. Now, we've got some things working in our favor for better rain chances in the coming days. Firstly, we've got a lot of moisture coming in from the tropics, uh, from a system that didn't develop into a tropical storm, but has been bringing some tropical moisture into the area. And an upper level trough of low pressure is sending energy across North Texas. In fact, it's North Texas that today and tomorrow could be experiencing some flash flooding because of this low pressure system. Behind it will be a cool front. This is early Monday morning. You can see that again Monday. Most of that rain will be across northeast Texas and Louisiana. Then by Monday night, that front approaches, fires off a few showers and storms. Chance for rain in your backyard is 30% on Monday night. But as that front falls apart, Throughout Monday night and into Tuesday, our rain chances do tick up about a 50% chance for rain on Tuesday. It'll be scattered in nature and that 50% chance will continue into Wednesday as that front stalls out overhead. Eventually rain chances will come to an end by the weekend. So what should you plan for this week? The best rain chances are Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, as I mentioned, 50%. Now the rain is still going to be scattered, so hit or miss. There will be those that get some good rain and those that miss out. But regardless, with the added cloud cover, it will not be as hot near 90 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now what are we watching out for? Because the atmosphere is souped up with moisture, tropical moisture, anywhere it does rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, there's the potential for some heavy rain in spots with localized flooding. So we're going to be keeping an eye on those things. Again, I wish I could guarantee rain 100% for everyone out there, but the best we can do is 50% on Tuesday and Wednesday. Those temperatures will be lower on those days and then rain chances will taper off by the weekend and our temperatures will go up. At least there's a decent chance for rain this week, Max and Sarah. Pro football coverage. Power yes, Bobby, thank you so much. Football. How about them Cowboys? We're in the heat of the preseason. Rosters are built and seasons are shaped. So Dak, Parson, oh, CeeDee Lamb, Zeke, they all didn't play. Probably smart. You know, you don't want to risk an injury. But yesterday, an exhilarating game nonetheless. Here we go. Obviously, we got Bosa on the Chargers. Chargers, team to watch this season. But wait for it. Chargers starting off hot. Here's where really the excitement goes. 98 yard kick return. Look at him go, weaving in and out of the Chargers. Kick return, and will he go all the way? He will. There you go. Cavante Turpin, 98 yards for a touchdown. You got to love it. Always exciting. Puts a smile on Mike McCarthy's face. Dak Prescott getting up, showing some love. And guess what, folks? We're far from done. Here we go. Punt return. Turpin, can he do it again? Oh my goodness, all he has to beat, last man on the field is the kicker, and let's just say it wasn't a fair fight there. So, another six on the day, good for him, good for the Cowboys, teammates obviously loving it. Sarah Costa, if you were to score a touchdown, what would your touchdown celebration be? Oh, it's a lot of pressure, Max, I gotta think about that. Okay. But you know what, this is a good tease, I will show you next Saturday when we're at the Alamo Dome for the KSAT Pick Send Class. You, uh, you stole our thunder here. I was teeing it up for you. I love it. You know what? Why don't you take it away? <laughs> All right. So we're talking about the excitement next Saturday, the KSAT Pigskin Classic. It's going to be a full day of football. You can see the schedule on your screen right now. Lots of big teams playing in the Alamo Dome. Tickets are still available. Just go to any Las Palapas location in San Antonio. And starting tomorrow, you can actually buy your ticket at the Alamo Dome. So tickets are $15 each. They are good for one game or all three games. I had someone reach out saying, can I go to the first game, leave, and then come back and go to the third game? Either all three games or one game. So just head to KSAT.com. We can find all that information. We'll be live there next Saturday from 8 to 10 in the morning. Very exciting. 8.54, 8.52, 79 degrees out. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's San Antonio's largest school district. We're talking about Northside ISD. Tomorrow on GMSA, what school officials are saying are there safety measures and protocols as students prepare to return to class. Light sprinkles moving into Wilson County right now. Only a 20% chance for an isolated downpour today. High of 95. Better rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday. Thanks for joining us for GMSA. We'll see you later tonight at 530.